In this tutorial, we're going to introduce network communication at layer 3. And this is where routers work. So we have one network, our network. We want to send information to another network. And we use this device called a router in between to do this. So we're going to look at uh, this process. Now, we've been discussing layer 2 addressing. And a layer 2 addressing is using MAC layers. So what are the problems that we have with <coughs> layer, two, uh, layer 2 addressing? Well, let's suppose we have our network. We're an Acme Corporation. And somewhere else, maybe we want to uh, attach to Microsoft's network, which is in the US, so quite a ways away. If we just use MAC addresses, which are fairly random, there is no easy way to send information over a lot of different network equipment through the internet and to find a MAC address on a PC that is in a remote network. So the first problem is no easy way. to send data across different networks. So if we're looking at what are called wide area networks, or networks which are in different geographic areas, uh, there's no easy way to do that just using MAC addresses. Now we're going to look at a second problem with layer 2 addresses. And a second problem happens when we have a large number of computers in one network. So we'll look at an example of where this breaks down. Let's suppose we've got our network here at our Acme Corporation, and we've got three different divisions, and maybe this is sales marketing, maybe this is engineering, and typically each of these divisions is using a, a single server to get most of their files, and so we have a lot of different connections here that go to the switch, and I've shown it just with a trunk line, but think of these as all individual lines here, so I think I've got 11 here, 12, and these 11 or 12 would go up to the switch, as would these. So connected to our switch, if we had 12 in each one, we might have 36 uh, basically PCs, with three servers. Now let's suppose these are mostly in sales, mostly communicating with the sales server. And same, marketing have a marketing server. And so on. Well, if you ever have an ARP, so one machine wants to send to the server. An ARP is a broadcast. And what happens is once a broadcast goes out into the switch, it's sent to every machine in the marketing group engine. All 36 or all 35 PCs uh, will get any broadcast. So the entire realm here, that's all our broadcast domain. And since it's our broadcast domain, and since broadcasts happen, whenever a broadcast occurs, nothing else can go on the wire. So this chews up a lot of bandwidth and can be very inefficient. So we're going to look at a different scheme to make this efficient. And to have a different scheme, we need to have a different um, a different addressing system, and this occurs at layer 3. So to overcome these problems, we have invented uh, an addressing scheme called IP addressing, and we're going to talk about IP addressing version 4, which is hierarchical nature, and that just means it's a tree structure 
uh, type of thing and it makes it easy to find locations and um, machines and networks anywhere in the world because of this tree structure. And it is called a logical addressing system as opposed to physical. So MAC addressing is physical. This is logical, which means we assign these addresses to uh, each device. So let's look at how this works. And we we're not going to get into too much detail. So we'll show an example of an IP address, and we'll show actually a private one, but 192.168.10.3. Now, this address, in order for this to work on the internet, this is not an internet address, it's sort of reserved, but IP addresses have to be unique to a machine, all machines anywhere in the world. IP addresses are made up of uh, basically they're eight bits in what is called an octet. So we have eight bits here. This gives me a number from zero to 255 in decimal. And so when we write an IP number here, we're writing them as four decimal digits separated by periods. Now, as I said, there are two parts to an IP address, so we'll take our IP address and part of it, and, and we can have different, um, different sections. Here we're taking three digits and we're saying this part is defines the network, where the network is in the world, and this digit is going to define the host. Uh, or the actual PC on the network. Now we could have the division here, we could have the division there, and we're going to find more um, more details about how we make this division as well. Well one question is how does, uh, how does the PC know how much of this is network and how much of it is host if it can change? Well you do it by looking at something called the network mask. Or defining the network mask. For all the network parts, you define a mask with a number 255. So if I say that mask is 255.255.255.0, what that means is that this part is uh, uniquely identifies the network and this part identifies individual machines within that network. This number here can go from 0 to 255, so we can define, uh, ac and actually we can't use 0, because that's reserved for the um, network itself. We can use 0 to 1. And 255 is all 1's, it's a broadcast, so we can actually go from 1 to 254. So that's how many, I can have 254 machines in this network. So that's the basis uh, of uh, an IP address. Now there's one other part, uh, a definition for IP uh, networks. So we're going to show two networks here. A device which can send information between networks is a special device called a router. So a router is going to work at this addressing layer, so a router is a layer 3 device. In order for a router to work, it's actually got to, have, got to be a part of whatever network. So this is network 1 and this is network 2. So a router here is going to have an interface, a network interface, that's actually going to be part of the network here. So this router has to have two network interfaces. And if it has a network interface, it has to be assigned an address. 
so it has to be assigned an IP address. This interface has a special name. It's called a gateway. So along with a machine having to have an IP address, you have to define the network mask. You're also going to have to define the gateway. And the reason for this is that if I want to send a packet, my machine has to know, is the packet going to another network or is it going to stay in my network? And if it's going to another network, it has to be sent to the gateway. Now, you can define the gateway to have whatever IP address you want. And just the standard we'll use in class is gateways will use the last possible address. This is not carved in stone. Organizations can use different standards or different uh, whatever they want to use. We'll just use that. So our gateway uh, might be uh, this. So this might be most of the IP settings that I would have to make uh, for a PC. So we're going to go back to our example and we're going to show how we're going to take this scenario and we're going to fix it so that it is more efficient. So right now we have a maybe a 48 port switch and maybe that's connected to our internet. We have all these 36 machines here and our network performance is really slow because we're getting bogged down with broadcasts or slowing up our bandwidth. Um, <clears throat> our switch only has so much bandwidth here too so uh, when these machines want to pull information from the sales server and these machines want to pull it from here that's all got to happen at the same time in the switch and the switch becomes a bottleneck. So let's look at breaking that up and let's look at um, building networks here. Now, because um, because uh, all machines have to have uh, an IP address, most applications are designed to work with IP addresses. So if we want to use pings, if we want to use um, we want to surf the web and use a protocol like HTTP, where we're sending files using FTP, whether we're using mail, all these applications are based in using IP addresses. Okay, so let's look here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this, can't remember which was which, but let's suppose this was the sales. This is marketing. And this is engineering. So now we're going to create our own little network here. And we're going to have our own switch. Okay, so our switch is connecting to all these machines and it's connecting to our server. So right away what we've done is we've broken up this broadcast domain and made it smaller. Instead of a broadcast domain before 36 PCs, we just have 12 PCs. I hope I have 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I have a broadcast, it only uh, will slow down these 12 machines, and I have a switch dedicated to it. I'm going to make another network for the marketing. So we're going to give them their own network and their own switch. So we've had to already, we've had to increase the number of switches that we've had. But instead of a 48-port switch, these could be 24s or uh, here 12-port switch, if you can buy a 12-port. And we have a third network here. They're totally independent, so information can be flowing in this network and this network and this network all at the same time in the switches because they're totally independent. So we've certainly increased our bandwidth significantly because we don't have the bottlenecks. A broadcast here can occur and it doesn't slow down or stop all these other networks. They're independent. Now I've got to define the layer 3 addressing for all these networks. So we're going to use a very simple scheme to do that. 
So we've got to define the layer 3 addressing. So let's suppose for the sales, I'll say, okay, it's going to be 192.168. And I'll, let's suppose this, we're just going to give this 10 network. And we reserve 0 for the number of the network. Um, I'll, I'll go over that in just a sec. And our mask dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. So this will be the mask. This is the IP address for this network. And I'll just leave it at that for now. We'll go back and take a look at it. Now this network needs to have its own uh, different network address. So let's suppose we use 20 here. And the net mask is going to be the same here. And this third network is going to be a 192.168. Let's just suppose it's 30. And I could use any number in this octet, this third octet, as long as it's different than the others. And the mask is the same in all of them, and that just indicates the first three numbers are the network ID. Now what happens to individual PCs in here? Well, individual PCs are given a number from 1 to 254 on this last number. So for instance, this PC might be assigned 192.168 dot 10. So all 12 machines have to have the first three numbers starting the same and then it could be this could be dot 1, this one might be dot 2, this might be dot 3 and so on. So in this network this would be 192.168.20.1 and so on. So we have to make sure that we assign IP addresses properly for all these. But now the problem becomes, how do I get packets between these networks if I want to? So this is where we need a new device called a router. So in order to implement this, to get efficiency, I'm going to need certainly more equipment. I'm in, I've moved from a single switch, 48 port, to three switches. And also I'm going to need this beast called a router. And the router is going to need to have at least three interfaces and those interfaces are going to be assigned are going to be assigned addresses which are part of the networks that they're routing between so this port would be a part of this network and therefore this port here would be assigned what is called the gateway address. So maybe I'll assign this 192.168.30.254. Okay, so that would be the gateway. And this gateway has to be specified, this gateway address has to be specified in the configuration for every PC. So every PC has to know where the gateway is. So I've for all 12 of these devices, I'm going to specify three pieces of information. Its own IP address, which is unique. The mask, which is going to, and that's going to be the same number for all these. Uh, in fact, it's going to be the same for all 36 machines. And the gateway. The gateway is going to be the same for all 12 of these machines. The only thing that's going to be unique in these machines is going to be its own IP address. This interface here is going to have to be assigned uh, 192.168.20.254. So that will be the gateway address for all machines in this network. So 12 machines in this network are assigned that as the gateway. And finally in this last network This port in the router here has to be assigned a gateway address of 254. And it doesn't need to be 254 as long as it's unique and as long as all these machines know where the gateway is. So in this example, my gateway is at 
So we've added some network hardware. We've increased the cost. We now have a three-port router that can route between these <clears throat> that routes between these networks. It has a network interface. So really what we have are 12 PCs, all with network cards, and we have one network interface on the router. So we're using up 13 IP numbers for this network. So what does every machine do? Let's pick a machine down in this network. And let's suppose I'm going to say ping. And let's suppose this is dot Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. This is dot six. And it wants to ping 192.168.10.3. So it wants to ping this machine over here. Well, every machine is actually going to make a routing decision. And the routing decision is, one, is this packet destined for my local network? Or is it destined for a remote network? Now, and how it makes that decision is it looks at its own network number. Here it's 192.168.30. And it looks at the network number for where it's sending a packet and it says, are they the same? If they're the same, it's destined for the local network. And it can just use an ARP, find out where that is, and away it goes. However, in this case, these numbers are different. So this machine says, ah, okay, it's for a remote network, and therefore I send it to the gateway. That's why we had to put that gateway number in its configuration so it would know where to send uh, the frame. So what happens is this frame, it may have to do an ARP to find out the MAC address of this port up here, the gateway, and once it does, it sends its information up into this port. The router then will get that. It will get that frame and inside the frame is some layer 3 addressing and the layer 3 addressing is for this address. So the router is going to process that frame. It's going to look at this and say, ah, that's the 192.168.10 network. I know that's way over here on this port. So I'm going to send that frame over here. I'm going to change some of the framing information. I'm not going to change the uh, layer 3 addressing information, but I may have to change some of the framing because now that's coming from this port MAC address. And that frame gets sent back into this network and directed to here and delivered. And so that's the purpose of a router. It is designed to um, transport frames between networks. The advantage of using a router in separate networks is that you're going to limit the broadcast domain. So if we look at a network like here, what's a broadcast domain? Well, it's contained within this network. So a router does not send broadcasts, or not typically send broadcast across all its ports. It stops uh, layer 2 broadcasts. So that is how um, routing works. It is a special additional addressing layer. It is logical <clears throat> and it allows information to be delivered across networks. Routers are typically very expensive. One of the major manufacturers of routers are Cisco. There's also other companies like Dell HP, and several other uh, companies, Juniper Networks, and so on, that will specialize in making routers. And eventually, as part of this course, you'll look at some of these devices, but other courses will deal with routers. So to get used to drawing networks and assigning IP numbers, and to see how the numbering system works, I want you to do this little assignment. Draw a network diagram that has two separate networks. Now these networks are going to be connected together with a router. 
and each network is just a single PC and a single server. So you've got two devices, but you're going to have two networks, so there's going to be four devices in total. In each network, the two devices are connected together with a switch. You only have a two-port switch. So you've got two switches. And those switches are going to be connected together uh, by a router, a two-port router. So you're going to need, for every device that needs to be assigned IP information, you're going to define the three pieces of IP information that we've used in this tutorial. That is the gateway, the IP address of each machine, and uh, a gateway. For the gateways, use the 254 as the last number in the octet. Now, something a little different is you're going to use a network mask of 255.255. So half of the numbers then are going to be for the network. The other half of the numbers are going to be used for uh, defining hosts. So your host could be like 0102. Um, you can use whatever numbering scheme you want. You can use 1.2. It doesn't matter. Uh, and they should be unique to you. Don't use uh, a numbering scheme that another student's using. So I just want you to get used to drawing that diagram. I want you to pass an electronic copy. So if you do it by uh, pen and paper, pencil, uh, just take a picture of it and send me the JPEG. Put your number on the drawing so I can see it. Or if you want to use Visio, then you can send me in a PDF of the final uh, drawing.